Howdy y'all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm James and this is Clearwater Fishing. And today we're talking about all the modifications I've made to my bass tracker, the Pro Team 175, and some of the must have modifications you should do. As most of you already know, the bass tracker is an excellent option for your first time boat owners. If you've never owned a boat before, or it's your first time really getting serious into some fishing categories, whether it's crappie or bass or whatever you like to fish for, the bass tracker is an excellent option for a first timer. But if you're just now either looking at getting a boat or you've recently bought a bass tracker, there might be some modifications you want to make. And this is hopefully just to give you guys some ideas on what you're getting into or what you may want to look into getting for yourself. I'll be covering all the modifications that I've made to my boat and trailer, even the ones that I've removed. Let's go ahead and get started back here where the dirty work is done. So one of the very first modifications I made to my bass tracker is the prop on the outboard. The Black Max is a good prop. It's a solid prop and it does provide top end speed for those who desire top end speed. You can get up to 33, 34 miles per hour with it. With the prop that I have on it now, it gets up to about 31 miles per hour. This prop is a four blade prop. It is the Mercury Spitfire. I stayed at the same pitch, lost about 150 RPMs, which makes it still within the, the optimal range. So not a big concern of mine. But the advantage that I have gotten out of this is the outboard will stay hooked up a lot better when it's trimmed up. You no longer will have those blowouts and have to start over or slow down uh, or trim in. I do sacrifice a couple miles per hour because of it, but I don't have to continuously keep adjusting my trim because of my prop. So while we're still on the business end of my bass tracker, you can notice that I've made a couple other modifications. One is this giant transducer. We'll talk about the fish finder modifications a little later, but I want to talk about the stern saver, and that's the mounting pad that the transducer is mounted on. It is not screwed into the hole at all. This has an adhesive pad that glues straight onto my transom and has kept me from drilling more holes into my transom. Uh, there's a couple holes here that I have plugged from my previous transducer that was mounted from the factory. But now with the stern saver, I'm free to change out transducers or if I want to try a new fish finder or if I just change out stuff on the regular, I have a pad that I can mount stuff into and not keep drilling holes into my transom. I think it's a huge benefit uh, for myself. It may not be that way for all of you. But in my case, it definitely made sense, especially if I like to experiment with new fish finders every now and then. I'll buy a new one and sell my old one. I lose a little money doing that way, but I get to try out many different features for you guys. And if you're wondering how long does it stay on with the adhesive pad, I've had my boat for three years and it has shown zero signs of coming off. So it'll at least last three years and it only cost me about 30 bucks. So the next one back here, what you may not notice as easily is I've upgraded my tail lights to LED tail lights. Not because I wanted to, because I had to. One of them got ripped off. Uh, I went in a dip somewhere and it drug right here and well, ripped off the tail light. So I had to buy a whole new set. So I might as well go upgrade to LEDs. And that's what I did. I don't feel like that is a necessity, but it was kind of nice. One last thing is the transom straps. I see a lot of people upgrade their transom straps to something of a ratchet type strap here. I don't feel like that's a necessary upgrade. Uh, if you feel like it is, that's great. But for me, uh, once these are set, I don't have to change them. I load the boat pretty much the same every time. So it latches in and I have no problems. I almost forgot my last modification here. I did change out the transom saver to a more rigid one. And what I mean by rigid is that I changed the whole transom saver out. The old one had just simple rubber pads here that mounted here. 
and I allowed the outboard to sway uh, a few inches while I was towing it. I bought this one since it's much more rigid and will keep the outboard steady during towing. It won't wear out uh, this area at all and it won't have to worry about my steering getting wore out as well up here, you know, just from it bouncing around so much. Overall, that change may not be that big of a deal, but it still makes me feel better when I'm looking out the rear view mirror and not seeing my outboard doing this number. Hey guys, I know we're right in the middle of this video. I want to take a moment and pause it here and talk to you guys about subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, it's an excellent thing to do. It'll help me out. It'll help me keep making awesome videos like this for you guys. We're sponsored on this channel. We're growing. And I hope to keep continuing providing awesome content for you guys, whether it's something as awesome as talking about modifications to my bass tracker or simply showing you a new bait or a technique. So make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and you'll be well on your way to catching more fish. Before we get started back with the video, I want to ask you guys to leave a comment below on what your favorite modification is on my boat or what your favorite modification is on your boat. Before we leave the business in, I want to talk about something I installed and removed off of my outboard, and that is the Mercury Vessel View. And I installed it wanting to get the hours and able to keep up with my maintenance stuff a whole lot easier than doing it on paper and then just guessing at the hours that I have. I thought it was causing an issue with the outboard with it shutting off and throwing me random error codes. It turned out all I had was a loose wire on my wiring harness. I had taken it off and I still had those problems. I had already returned it. And once I figured out the problem was, I really wish I didn't return it. Uh, it's an excellent tool, especially to keep up with your hours. And you also get all sorts of nice little bits of information, such as oil pressure. Uh, some units you can get water pressure and that kind of stuff, which is really great to monitor while your outboard is running. So I consider Mercury Vessel View as something worth having. Almost a must have, you don't absolutely have to have it. You can still do maintenance on your outboard during regular time intervals. If you wanna be precise and you fish a lot and you know you put a lot of hours on your outboard where you might have multiple surfaces in a year, definitely get a Vessel View. Boy, that is a lot of batteries in a small space. These are three 29 size deep cycle batteries. Two of them run my trolling motor. I upgraded to a 24 volt trolling motor. We'll talk about that in the future. And down here is the other 29 deep cycle battery that runs my outboard and all my electronics. And in case you were ever wondering, you can fit three 29s in here but doing so, I could not fit my charger in here. Since I upgraded to a three battery system, I needed to upgrade chargers as well. So here's the ProMarner Pro Sport 20 Plus. It is a three bank battery charger. I installed it in the cubby right next to the batteries. Hopefully you guys can see that right next to the batteries. So all my wires ended up getting running through a hole here. I don't know how well you can see that, but a hole here that I had to make. I did lose a little bit of storage. I didn't use this a whole lot other than maybe for some cooler storage. So I use the other side as my cooler storage, but this guy fits in here pretty well. I leave this door open when I'm charging and overall all of it fits in pretty well and I've had no issues leaving it in here. All right, now we're off to some fun stuff. My fish finder. I did upgrade my fish finder. Originally, it came with a Lowrance. I believe it was just a simple 2D sonar. Uh, it did do pretty well at finding depth, finding some interesting spots, but I wanted to upgrade to something where I could really find and locate fish, structure, and really do some serious mapping of waypoints. So I bought this Lowrance Elite 9 Ti, actually before I even owned this boat. I had bought this fish finder planning on buying a bass tracker that would come with some simple fish finder. Uh, and that's where the big transducer comes into play. It has side imaging, down imaging, 2D sonar, 
And this guy has GPS mapping on it, so it's fantastic for having those waypoints. Now this is a nine inch model. So just to give you guys a quick size comparison, if you're looking at sizes and stuff versus consoles, we're gonna move the screen there. And this is how I have my system mounted. This is just a simple RAM mount. I think it's a four inch RAM mount. I can't even remember the length on this. Anyways, it is a size A RAM mount. Every time I do tow the boat, I do remove this every time and either store it right down here if it's going right back to the house, or I can store it in one of my storage compartments up front. If I had a little larger size RAM mount, maybe a B or a C, I wouldn't be so concerned. I'd probably leave it mounted all the time, but you can see it does have some movement here with the size A. Uh, I don't really regret it because I do like being able to store away my electronics but I do kind of wish I would have went with a larger size RAM mount. Now for me, upgrading your fish finder is almost an absolute must, uh, unless all you do is shallow fishing. Uh, if you do any kind of offshore fishing or looking for any kind of structure offshore, definitely need a upgraded fish finder. And this is a nine inch model. You can obviously see that you could fit something maybe a little larger here. I wouldn't say like a 12 or a 15, but definitely a 10 would fit here pretty comfortably. So we finally made it to the exciting end of the boat, the bow of the boat. This is where the fish are caught. This is where the memories are made. This is where the work is done, getting done during those tournament days, the bow of the boat. First thing we're gonna talk about, I've made a modification, the fish finders up here. The originally this one did not come with a bow fish finder, so I've done everything up here as far as fish finder goes. And this is a Garmin Echomap Plus 93SV. This is another nine inch unit. I bought this unit to work with my live scope unit, which we'll talk about here in a minute. I have this fish finder installed on another ram mount. I learned my lesson and I went with a D size ball mount. I did not want to have to remove this every time I wanted to trailer the boat. So I have not done that at all and everything's gone well. This is a huge ball mount. The only, the only play is, is that loose uh, screw right there. Apparently I didn't realize it was loose. I can tighten that back down, but overall this guy is not going hardly anywhere. So typically you don't need a side imaging unit for your bow. Uh, I only bought the SV because I didn't know exactly where this guy was gonna end up. At some point in time, I thought I was gonna put it at the console. Uh, I had lots of ideas in my head at the time and SV was the one that worked with the live scope. So this is the one I got, it was on sale. I believe I got it for $600 uh, right before they came out with their next model. Um, it's Echo Map Plus or something. It's further than plus. I can't even remember off the top of my head. Uh, it's the current one now. I wish I could remember it. Uh, it's bothering me. But regardless, I installed it up here. Uh, originally, I'll show a little closer view of this grommet here. I drilled a hole into this front uh, plate here so I can install my wires through uh, to get power. And it comes back up here for the transducer on the trolling motor. So do you need a fish finder on the bow of your boat? I consider it more of a must than a prop change on the outboard. Let's put it that way. I would definitely suggest having a fish finder on the bow of the boat, if nothing else, just to tell you the depth and to have waypoints. Uh, waypoints are extremely important. Uh, you find a brush pile, you want to fish it, you want to have that available to you at the bow of the boat. So here's the wires coming out of the fish finder. I bought this grommet uh, from Lowe's. Uh, I don't even remember the size. It's not that big of a deal. You can figure out whatever size you want. I drilled a hole in this plate, put this grommet here so there was no sharp edges and it looks really nice. It looks like it came that way, but I promise you it didn't. And over here to the right, I installed my live scope switch uh, it drains power all the time and I don't have a power switch on my batteries. 
So I have this. This turns off my live scope and no more power drawn from the live scope. Since I just mentioned live scope, let's uh, take it out and look at it for a second. This is my live scope setup. This is a fishing specialties mount and they work with you really well that you can get whatever spacer you need up here to get over your gunnel here. Uh, you have all sorts of mounting options as far as uh, what kind of plate you want. You have an aluminum plate, you can have a black uh, composite board like I have here. I had to do a repair because I broke it. Uh, but that's a, in another video I've already got out. If you guys want to check that out, you're more than welcome to. Uh, that was me being stupid, not anything wrong with this mount. But like I said, let's take it out and look at it. Uh, I have this little bungee cord to keep everything kind of secure here. So my pole here doesn't come undone and it simply just slides into the cup. Boom. And the way that it works, uh, the way I have mine set up is this is pointing where the transducer is pointing. So my handle's pointing this way, transducer's pointing that way, and that's what we're looking at. You can mount it on the side of the pole if you want. You have a mounting option on the bottom, which is what I've chose to do because I always use it in forward view. So I have this mounted in forward view for all the, almost all the time. I don't think I've ever used down view. I could buy the other mount where you have the perspective mode where you can look out in front of the boat. But when I'm crappie fishing, uh, I use this always in forward view. So since we're here talking about live scope, I wanna talk and whether or not it's an absolute must. The answer of course is no, it is not an absolute must. It is a really, really nice to have and it is really, really fun to use, especially crappie fishing. I find it extremely useful. Crappie fishing, I use it quite a bit for walleye fishing as well. I can identify those fish near or on the bottom really easily. It's real easy to identify uh, a walleye on these guys because they look totally different than bass and crappie. So it's pretty easy to identify. Uh, I don't really video game fish the walleye. I just know, hey, there's a few in the vicinity and I can uh, fish the area pretty thoroughly and catch a couple. But this is how I have my live scope installed. Uh, just take it as an idea if you care to. Um, I find this extremely effective and I have no desire to change it. Uh, I see people put them on their trolling motors all the time. I may, want to, I may have wanted to do that, but with the trolling motor I have selected, it is impossible. So since I went ahead and brought up the trolling motor, let's go ahead and talk about it. I upgraded this one uh, from the Motor God X3. Most of them come with Minn Kota edges now, but the Motor God X3 is what this one came with uh, when I bought it and I upgraded to a Motor God XI3. The reason I did that is I wanted a trolling motor that had spot lock that was within my price range. Uh, I got this guy for about a thousand dollars, a little little under a thousand dollars, like nine hundred and fifty dollars, uh, from Cabela's. Uh, it was on sale. Uh, this is a seventy. Woo! Scared me. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, kind of scared myself to death there with uh, the wife opening the door and all. But what I was saying is that this is a Motor God XI3 with a pinpoint GPS, so it has the spot lock functions. It is 70 pound thrust, 24 volt system. Now that being said, do you need that much power to maneuver this boat on a regular? Absolutely not. Uh, 70 pound thrust, I only typically go up to about five uh, on the windiest of days to maneuver this bass tracker. So that means I'm only using about half of its power. So a 55 pound or a 60 pound thrust would be more than enough to maneuver this boat most of the day. I wanted to go up to the 24 volt system because there was gonna be some days that I wanted to fish that I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get back to a charger. So I could fish a couple days on one set of batteries. Not the best for your batteries, but if you have to, you can with this 24 volt system uh, or any 24 volt system on a trolling motor. Uh, at least for the Bass Tracker, you're not gonna 
overpower it and use too much juice. Now on a 12 volt system, you're gonna be pretty weak at the very end of a, of a day uh, and you're gonna to wanna to recharge that battery. So overall, do I recommend this particular trolling motor? The answer is absolutely not. I do not recommend the MotorGuide XI3 for a bass tracker for a couple reasons. And the first reason, I wanna grab it real quick. And that is going to be the foot pedal. This guy, in my opinion, and in, I've had two of these already, is absolute trash. Uh, you can put your foot on here and, and just put the pressure of your foot on here and it will randomly turn the trolling motor and nearly throw you out of the boat. Uh, the momentary switch, even though you can hear it press and depress, sometimes it will stay, the trolling motor will stay on and continue. You have to come back and hit it again. Those two things alone are enough of a headache. And when you use the spot lock function and you have it in spot lock and you want to get it out of spot lock, you have to do a series of events to get it out. So you have to press spot lock and that turns it off. And then you can't just start controlling your trolling motor again uh, with the momentary switch. You have to put it in continuous, turn it off of continuous, and then this switch is active again. I don't know why that is the way this works, but it is very frustrating. So if, when you find an area you want to fish for a few minutes and you spot lock, and then you have to go back and do that whole process again and you're ready to move on. Uh, that was, that's the first reason. Uh, I don't really like the foot pedal. The foot pedal is pretty awful. The second reason is the way the trolling motor deploys itself is the shaft has to slide through the motor head here, it slides through, which makes it really difficult on installing transducers, especially these new live sonar units that are designed to mount on the shaft. There is no room, there's no room to mount it on the shaft at all. So uh, you're really stuck with mounting it on the motor itself and I really don't like doing, doing that um, because you have to come up with this kind of coil system and there is a high, high risk with this guy of pinching your transducer wires. And there's still not a whole lot of room here to even put another set of transducer wires in my coil here. Now, there's other, other methods I know that you could do this with, but with all the other headaches of this trolling motor, I don't find this a whole lot of value. I wish I would have went with an Ultrex. At the time, it was the only other one that had spot lock, but did not have a shaft that slid through the motor head. Nowadays, you have the Lorentz unit and you also have the Garmin unit as well. Me personally, whatever units I was going to use on my boat and invest in is also the type of trolling motor I would get just so they could all talk and work together it adds a whole lot more functionalities to your trolling motor. But anyways, in my opinion, if you, want, if you guys want my opinion, I would do Humminbirds and an Ultrex. Uh, I believe Humminbird is the best down imaging, the best side imaging on the market, and it has Mega360 to go along with it. Do I believe it has a good live imaging system? Uh, at this point in time, it's proven to be okay. I would not call it great. Uh, maybe, Maybe we'll see better, more updates as things come along. But what little has been shown to me, it's just okay. But the 360 definitely makes it a game changer. So I would definitely be getting the Ultrex uh, on my next boat. So the next set of modifications really have to do with the trailer. I know I talked about the tail lights earlier, but this more has to do with the tires and the grease systems and all that. So first thing, it comes with these little hubcaps that go over the center piece of your tire, your trailer. I'll show that to you guys real quick. All right, so this guy simply clicked on here over uh, the little, the lug nuts here. It, it clicks on over there. I lost one and it was not really worth buying another one. So I left it off. I didn't want it anymore. So that left this area kind of exposed. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. Uh, this is a bearing buddy cap uh, that I put over the top. And this, this exposes this cap here. 
this is between the, the grease inserts and all the grease uh, and the outside of your of your, the world here, uh, your wheel. This is not super, super good at holding grease in. It would sling a little bit of grease out and it would cause all sorts of nastiness all over the wheel. So I bought this little bearing buddy here. It's just a little cap and it fits snugly over the top. Uh, this is a Model 17B. Uh, if you guys want to get that for yours, uh, I highly recommend it. It keeps your wheels really clean. I've not washed them since then, and it's been like a year and a half since I've done that modification. Next is I would recommend upgrading your tires. And what I mean by upgrading your tires, I mean going to a load range D tire uh, where the pressures run at 65 PSI. There are many Bass Trackers out there that have load range C tires and they have a lot of flex here and build up a lot of heat. So that's why I recommend going to a load range D radial tire. It just transfers heat so much better and it produces a lot less heat because it is a load range D. So you can uh, take a look here at the bottom uh, where my weight is on the tire and there's not a whole lot of flex here. So. That's why I went to a load range D tire. So here is my last modification I wanna talk about. And this is an adjustable bicycle seat for your boat. Uh, this is the last modification that I've made. And it is a pretty darn good one to have on the boat. Now I typically fish without a seat, but when the water gets questionable, I will gladly put this seat up front and stabilize myself so I don't fall in the water. Uh, I don't like the, the low seats that come with it uh, and you're sitting nearly on the ground and they're not adjustable at all. So I just want something that I can lean against and keep myself stable. All right, guys, that about covers all the modifications that I've made to my boat. Let me know in the comments below which modification was your favorite and which one you're going to be applying to your bass tracker. Don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. It'll get out to more people and help more people out like yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. But just like always, until next time, get out there and go catch you some fish.